Okay. Hey guys, happy splasher here. Good morning. Wow, I sound different. Oh boy. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so we are going to start uh, this week in the Dungeon of Trials. The Dark Tower is now open, so yeah, let's go into that. Okay, as you can see, Dark Tower will happen, happen for about a week. So again, going in. We have three attempts right now. We need 16 wins for the week, and uh, yeah, we have some rares as rewards. We'll start it off right now, and yeah, let's uh, let's go. Okay, well, let's take a look at what we're facing. So we have a Jimmy Rocker Boy, has the block runes, has the Rocker Boys with the splash, and then also setting the health of our heroes to one, except the melee ones. Okay, they have a couple of buildings over here, and looks like they just dealt damage to their own buildings. The hero here deals damage to non-order heroes, so, just, so that includes their buildings over there. Also gives metal shield to their warlord, and then has some block. Pretty high stats as well. Have our building here that will heal. Okay, let's see. Okay, we are going to start with our Justia over here behind the building. Just to give it some protection, placing it over here on D2. The uh, reason why is because we do want protection, and then also at the same time, the Justia gives attack boost to allies in the same row. So in this case, if we do it this way, we have the option to boost either uh, a melee or a ranged in the spot. Otherwise, it's only the ranged here. Okay, so they did the block runes. That is fine. Expect to that. Probably next turn, depending upon what happens, we either summon the Butcher over here, or perhaps this melee hero. Okay, we have the ranged hero over here, that freezes two of our ranged heroes, also on the block rune, so a little bit of stats. We're going to summon our... let's see... yeah, you know, we will. We will summon our Vampire early, and then we'll summon the Butcher. The Butcher sets the health of one of the enemies to one, so potentially getting rid of the, uh, the Angelia over here. Also going to place this melee hero in front of the Justia, just for a little bit of protection. Whoops. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so in this case, we set the range hero to one, which is not what we want. At the end of the turn, however, the vampire does deal damage with the damage heal. And then we can potentially go for a board wipe next turn. Still needs to deal with the Angelia, but it is going to get missed from the Justia skill here. Okay, so we have the champion of the arena, it gets blocked when it comes out in play, it did land on block rune, and then if it gets a kill, it gets the extra attack. Let us see, I'm gonna continue on, I'm gonna summon this melee hero on a two. This one gives reborn to one of our chaos heroes. In this case, it looks like it is the vampire because of the icon here. Oh. Hey, we're just wounding some more heroes. So because we got rid of the champion, we are guaranteed to place the miss on the Angelia again. Great. Okay, so now we are facing the Tengu. This sets the attack of our heroes to one for a turn when they come into play. Let's see, let us see. We're actually going to continue. We're going to summon this uh, Dark over here. This one gives uh, plus health to our heroes before the enemy attacks. I'm going to place it over actually here on B2. The reason why is because we do want to protect the Dark so that we can keep on getting health to our heroes. And at this point, we do want to protect our setup. We have the Flying Attacker here with the Attack Boost given for the Justia. We do have these two melee heroes over here. And so we don't mind having this lane open. We can also just set up for a destruction whenever we need to. Uh, we're not going for lethal quite yet, as we are outside of the lethal range. But for the time being, we can still hold off on the board. Okay, so we have the Angelia dealing damage. We have this range hero here that actually gives extra attack to a random ally once it dies. So let's see, combat, combat, still out, out of range. So I'm going to range here actually to get rid of this. Yeah, we'll actually we'll summon a melee hero just to block for here. Okay, this one also gives mental shield. This one also does have mental shield. So it will actually help us block over here. 
Okay, when this hero dies, it will give extra attack. So in this case, it is to... Assuming it's probably this one, yeah. Okay, there we go. All right, so because of that, next turn we will be doing our destruction. Also do want to get rid of that Tengu, so that way we can summon the heroes to actually attack. We are pretty close to lethal now. 140, over here. Okay, guess they just got rid of their own stuff. That's fine. Okay, we can actually hold off for one more turn. No, no, we won't because we won't. We don't let the extra destruction happen, so we'll do that. Okay, we'll follow it up next with the. Let's see. In terms of stats, this is probably the best one. Although this one here can go for damage. This one is flight. Yeah, we'll go for the one with the better stats. Okay, so we'll summon the red woman over here on the same lane, uh, same row as the Justia, so he gets an attack boost. Yeah, at this point now, we just need to deal with both the Rocker Boys and then also the setting the health of our heroes to 1. <laughs> okay, I think got the ranged hero over here. Nothing significant, so we'll skip that. Okay, we're going to summon our ranged heroes now just to go for damage. And let's see combat, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Okay, we'll summon this range hero over here and should be good enough for lethal. Okay, great. So we took a couple of turns in order to get rid of the Angelia. Just looking for a good spot to go for the attack. Okay, got some runes because we're still in the whirlwind right now. And then we got some rare Mazors. Alright. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, we are facing an ogre right now. Uh, let's take a look at their pet. The attack boost happening. Pretty uh, a lot of attack boost. Have the ogre here with the silence, the heal, and the stones with the heal going to start in terms of stats with the circuit over here. This also deals damage to another enemy once we attack the Warlord. So in this case, we're going to place it over here on C3 because of the opening. Deal some damage to this building. That's cool. Also, this hero gets regeneration whenever any hero dies except a building. But yeah, it has pretty good stat lines for now. And so even if it does get silenced, we'll still have a hero with large defense. Okay, we have this range hero over here, summons to instant kill runes, also has toxin because of our circuit. We'll also deal damage when it dies. Let's see, combat over here. Not enough to actually destroy this, unfortunately. Uh, let's see, damage over here. Yeah, you know what? Okay, we can continue and let's see, poison over there. Yeah, I actually don't mind poisoning this rather than summoning another hero. So I'm gonna summon this range hero over here on a2. When it attacks, it deals poison to the enemy attack. Okay, looks like a spice went off. And our circuit dealt damage to the, well, the TNT. So in this case, now we lost a couple of our heroes, but that's okay. At least we don't have the instant kill runes happening again. Okay, and looks like they got an attack boost as well because of the pet. See here, we have this uh, melee hero here with the Flight and the Reborn. I actually summoned this building over here on D3. This building deals damage to other enemies when they come into play. I'll help us set up for a board wipe. And then also it has decent stats so that it can actually still protect us in the lane. And then also if it gets silenced, if they do the silence, it doesn't affect our building. Okay, so they did the silence now. Okay, uh, let's see. This hero here will get... It has spikes, vampirism. A little out of lethal for this. 
Oh, okay, this one's actually not bad. So we'll summon the Bastet next over here on B3. When it comes into play, it deals damage to all heroes. Okay, so we'll have the attack boost also because of the Bastet destroying uh, some other heroes. Right now we are dealing with the Hoodoo over here. This one has the spikes, uh, gives the wood spike skill to another range hero and also the totems. Going to continue on, summon this melee hero over here on... So I'm going to hold off on using this attack rune. Heck no, we'll go for damage, that's fine. So when it comes to play, it summons these extra attack runes. And we can use this to deal more damage or have a effect trigger go off twice. So right now our goal is to draw out those stones, so that way we can then go for a clean board wipe. So here over here swaps the health and attack of one of our heroes, so in this case it's this one. Up here. Ooh, uh, still gonna actually hold off and take the damage over here. So we can go for block, that's that over there. Yeah, we're going to continue on with that. So we're going to summon this range hero over here on the extra attack room. Let's go for some damage. Also summon those instant kill rooms at the end. Okay, they are healing a little bit. Okay, they did the stones, which is what we wanted to see. They are damaged from the building. And then as one of the enemies are destroyed, the, oops, the totem, whoa. The totem here yeah, heals their other enemies. Yeah. Okay, they have the grace over here with the random damage and also the extra attacks. Okay, we're going to do our destruction now because we can't let any of these other heroes stay alive. Although, oh, now the hoodoo is healed up. That's not good. Uh, yeah, we still need to get rid of this. So we'll do our vampire. We'll do our destruction. Get rid of those. We'll follow up with the arranged heroes over here. Okay, not quite what we need to do in terms of damage, especially since now this hoodoo is still around. Let's see combat over here. No, okay, we can summon our melee hero over here to actually destroy this. Okay, they'll heal because of us attacking the stones. Combat over there. We'll get some health back off of the melee kill. We'll have enough damage to destroy the stones. And then right now we're just dealing with these hoodoo over here. Okay, we have the Evil Slayer over here, gets an attack boost, also destroys all runes and pentagrams on their side, so in this case the instant kill runes are now gone. I uh, gotta follow it up, and let's see, combat over here, combat there, okay, we have the Matriarch Yona, we're gonna summon here on B3, this does extra splash damage to enemies around, so that'll actually be enough to destroy both of these heroes, we'll get some health back off and melee kill too. Wow, they summon another grace again. Okay, uh, let us see. So we do want to put a little bit of pressure on their board. So what we'll actually do is we have combat over there, combat there. Oh, this one's not bad. This one gets an attack boost for every wounded hero that's on our side. Also gets, in terms of stats, probably, yeah, we'll go for, for damage instead. So we're going to summon this melee hero over here on uh, B3, or C3 rather. Yeah. Okay, we have this range here over here. We'll heal their warlord every time attacks. Let's see, come over there. Uh, so we are going to net if we actually attack the um, 
the what do you call if we attack the warlord so we're going to continue on we're actually going to summon our range hero behind this range hero <laughs> so we'll attack we'll gain some health attack gain some health again okay it looks like this hero will probably be destroyed by combat next turn Okay, again, we are going to avoid this. We still need to summon heroes that have stronger attack than the heal. So we'll summon this range hero next. Do we want to see if we actually destroy this or not? No, we'll still go for combat. That's fine. So we'll summon this range hero over here on A1. It freezes two of the enemies. Okay, and so we just need to deal a little bit more damage over here. It looks like we have another matriarch that will actually help us deal more damage to the... Uh, Tortalus over here with the splash damage. Oh, we also have the ghost over here that will deal damage whenever one of our heroes attacks. Okay, we have the melee hero here that gives mental shield to the warlord. Again, we are going to still do the same thing with the matriarch. Also heal their warlord for a little bit when we attack the hero. Okay, we finally got rid of the Torless now. Okay, and so we are threatening lethal on both of these lanes. And we just need to get one attack through here. Hopefully they don't deal 700 damage in the next turn or so. Whoa! Okay, froze two of our ranged heroes, our melee heroes over here. And then they have these hollows that help them block. Let's see combat over here 140 we don't have any ranged heroes of course all right so let's see oh this one deals damage at the end of the turn so we're actually gonna do our sun deaths okay we'll have combat over here on a one and then we'll summon our building over here it will deal damage at the end of the turn and there we go normally we don't use buildings in combat but whatever it takes in order to win so all right, we got some more runes, got some scientists, and yeah, oh, some Arthur, wow. It's kind of fitting. Those are the last two new heroes from the previous events. So yeah, let's, uh, let's keep going. Okay, facing another ogre over here. Got the Gleedy pet. This one gives health whenever a melee hero kills, also plus health. Uh, let's see. You know, we're actually going to start with the Gremory over here on... Actually, let's see here. Yeah, we're actually going to start with the Gremory over here on E2. We want to get some curses on the uh, the Warlord, and so that's what we'll do. We'll mark these buildings with the curse, because these are the only two enemies out there. Then if we can destroy them, we can put some curse on the Warlord and deal more damage that way. Was going to go also potentially with the matriarch but again we don't need to really deal that much damage we just need to set up our board and also actually have heroes that um have decent stat lines all right so let's see so we'll have curse we'll have damage over there this one has metal shield this one's block over there okay uh we have the mina had deals damage whenever we attack their warlord probably want to get rid of this hero now so probably uh let's see how much damage dealing around 60 damage so we have 20 turns let's see we can do on the curse destroy that this one deals damage to a chaos this one is pierce uh we actually get some health back off of this melee kill so that's not too bad yeah. let's do that it comes to play with metal shield the metal shield will go away because of the spikes that's fine. I don't actually know if they cleaned up the curse, so they said something about the curse being glitched on the ogre. Don't know if it's gonna happen or not, but we'll find out. Yeah. Alright, taking some more damage. Probably going to see our heroes being wiped out next turn. Do have to set up for that board wipe, so we are going to do our destruction right after we wound the heroes. Have this range hero over here that heals ally. Oh wow. Heals him for 73. That's that's a lot of heal. All right, so I guess for the time being, we can actually just block this for now. This range, this melee hero on A3 has flight. We'll summon a splash rune on one of our, our cells. That's nice. Okay, and at this point now, if we do have the silence, that is okay. 
Oh, the Mina is healed. Wow, that's not what we want to see. Okay, well, the curse is on there. Uh, Warlord, so that's good. And, of course, they're protecting the Mina. Yep. <laughs> we didn't expect that. Okay, we're probably going to lose now just because of that Mina itself. We don't have any other heroes to wound. I guess that's what the uh, the Matriarch would have been for. Let's see, block, block, block. No, okay. Yeah, we are going to be taking lethal now, so... It's unfortunate. Tried to do something a little creative. Didn't, didn't work out. Yeah, on that particular draw, we didn't have anything for that Mina, and then as a result, once the extra rare hero came out, couldn't break through. Okay, so this time now, same thing with an Ogre. They got a Drogon. This one gives health boost, attack boost, and then also extra damage off of a male kill. We have the Shamuna over here that will free... Well, actually, no, it will summon a shard, and it has the protection over there. I'm going to freeze this hero so that way we can actually have access to her. So we're going to summon the ranged hero over here on lane D. The shard now gets destroyed because of the change to Shimuna. So we just got to find a way to break through this metal shield now and then attack her. Okay, so this one here, it says freezes two random enemies except nature. This one freezes two random range. Uh, okay, so we'll just have to break that. Let me just see if we have anything else. The counterattack on the Shimuna does not allow us to summon melee because then uh, it will be destroyed. So we'll summon a range hero and just going to go for the hero with the better stats. Just seeing if there's anything else that we can do here. We can deal some extra damage to the Warlord, but... Let's go for the better stats. So we'll summon the range here over here on D2, break the metal shield, and then we'll have combat to destroy the Shimuna. Whoa! Of course. Okay, so we have the Evil's Helper. This one transforms one of our heroes into a box. So now this one is gone. Uh... Uh, this is actually not bad. We're going to summon this melee hero over here on A3. It sets the health of two of the enemies to one if this does die. They do have their silence skill, so that could potentially be a silence now. Which it is, but that's okay. Do you need to draw out that silence skill anyway? Let's see. Next turn could either go with the Matriarch for some damage or for the Jaxi over here. Probably actually going to go with the Matriarch for some damage. Let's see, combat over there, combat there. Okay, yeah, we're going to summon the Yona over here on D3. It has that splash damage, so you can see you can get around the heroes. And probably next turn we will do destruction skill as we will be taking at least 300 damage here. Okay, so as mentioned, we will do our vampire first, then our destruction skill next. Open those up. Let's see, the vampirism will destroy that. Uh, oh, we can set the health of this range hero to one. And then we'll have the matriarch deal the damage to destroy this and gain some health back. Along with the vampire also destroying this building and gain some more health. Okay, so we have the stones now. Just gotta get rid of those. Oof. Okay, we have this Chubacabras over here. It has it has some sort of vampirism, so whenever it, attack, it gets attacked, it will deal damage to enemies in the line. Also, will heal itself, so 150, 130. Don't have anything to freeze it, unfortunately. Uh, could curse, I suppose. But it does have a lot of health. This is where we wanted to save our destruction for a turn after because of those stones. Uh, could do mental shield, could do freeze for there. 
All right, yeah, we got to find some way to deal damage to this hero. So for the time being, we will do the Gremory. Something over here on B1. There's some heroes. Okay, we'll have that damage as seen over there. And it looks like the curse did affect the Chupacabras. So that's the only way that we are dealing damage to that hero without actually attacking it and triggering off its damage skill. Okay, we have this Leaf Child summoned behind this totem. This one will actually deal damage whenever heal triggers. Uh, let's see. So on the curse over there. Okay, we're going to summon this uh, Eel's Helper, potentially transforming this. Okay, in this case, we actually transform the totem. That's good because that way that totem can't deal damage to us. Okay, that curse damage once again. Okay, actually got rid of that ranged hero and got some health back. Okay, got rid of the present. Uh, and let's see how much curse is actually on this ogre. Okay, so about 58. Still a little behind, but yeah, what are you going to do? Okay, we have the Tortalus now. Oh, they're healing because every time the Drogon, uh, the Drogon pet skill is going to go off. All right. So, oh, actually, actually, in this case, now we can actually transform this hero. So let's do that. Summoning our Santa over here on A1. Transforming that. Okay, we have those curses. Got the heal happening. Okay, next turn we will be doing our Witch's Summons to actually attack this Tortalus. We didn't want to do the summons last turn because there would have been a chance that the summons got in the way of the Santa. Of course. Okay, so we have the Jaxi over here with the extra attack. Also has the evasion. So we can't use our range heroes on that. We can summon our own Chupacabras. And that'll actually be good for some damage. Summoning over, over here on the melee spot on a... And we also still have curses happening, so that's good. Okay, and then we have Vampirism Trigger from the Vampire, which will actually give us an attack boost due to the Chubacabra skill here. Whoa! We have the Vampirism happening once, we have the Vampirism happening twice off of the Jaxi. Okay, we have the ranged hero over here that summons a tree in front of themselves. We're just going to go for damage now. So we do our summon. Okay, just doing some math. So 1, 280, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. All right, so we're off by a little bit. It's going to be safer if we just get rid of this hero. Uh, yeah, we're probably actually going to miss lethal if we do this, but I, I'd rather just go for a board clear instead. We also deal damage because of Curse, so that's not too bad. Got damage. Oh, okay. Looks like we have enough for lethal anyways. Okay, so had to run around a little bit just because of the uh, Chupacabras and the Tortalus. But we did get the victory, uh, so that's good. All right, got some more runes. Oh, got some double uh, El Mariachi because of the event, uh, it being an event card. Okay, and oh, some more Arthur. All right. Okay, yeah, let's uh, let's keep going. Okay, uh, they got another Sentry Pet again. Whoa! Okay, and they're starting with a Leader Nillin. This one has those Hollows. Not too bad. We can deal some random damage over to it. Oh, we can actually deal damage with this uh, Yori as well. One of them is going to have a little bit more protection. This building's deal damage over there. No, this is fine. Yeah, we do want to get rid of some of their buildings. So, we'll summon our Yori over here on A1. Okay, we'll deal some damage to the range, as you see here. Okay, our hero is also poisoned because of the leader Nillin. Whoa! 
Okay. Oh, we have some more hollows happening. Okay, and yeah, those hollows are going to be a problem now because of the extra summons. We have this melee hero over here, has reborn, also deals damage to our order heroes, which in this case was the uh, Yori here. Okay, uh, oh boy. Really hate using the destruction on the very first turn, but we're probably going to have to do that, especially now because of the other heroes. So, some of the our ranged hero, or our vampire over here. Let's see, followed up with the ranged hero over here on A1. Do enough damage to actually get rid of this. Trigger the reborn, and then we have the vampire dealing the damage at the end. Okay, so it looks like we are going to lose our hero, our vampire over here, because of the amount of poison. Okay, some more hollows. And... Yep, alright, so in this case we'll do our destruction. And let's see, if we block, we'll do 130. Still needs to deal with their silence and their other stuff, so unfortunately we're actually going to take the loss over here. <sighs> To some pretty tough battles just in the beginning so yeah let's uh let's keep going they said they were going to tweak the difficulty of this what happened okay looks like they're starting first they have the jimmy rocker boy with the block runes the rocker boys with the splash setting the health of our heroes to one also the sentry pet with the attack boost yeah wow all right pretty rough start here so they have the freddy over here when it dies it has a skill to damage one of our heroes and then also we'll come back so you block over there Ugh. all right i don't like what's going to happen but we are going to do it anyway so what we're going to do is we're going to summon our frost over here on d1 yeah. when it comes into play or any order hero comes into play, we'll freeze one of the heroes, and then we'll set the attack, or the health of it, rather, to 1. Next turn, probably going to go for a vampire summon to help us get rid of this hero. And we want to do this, the frost first, before the vampire, because sometimes the frost happens, uh, the vampire summons on top, rather on the bottom of the frost, resulting in the damage skill not working. Uh, so we'll do the vampire as mentioned and then we're gonna follow up with okay it's still on the bottom too great all right so in this case we're gonna summon another order hero to actually trigger off that skill okay looks like we froze the same hero again which is not what we want okay in agency now that hero the freddy is now gone our frost is now marked with that damage skill thankfully it is protected by the mental shield and also we have our mental shield building also protected by our vampire so that's a little something Okay, we don't have any order heroes this time, so we'll have to go for damage. This one here on the block rune, so a little bit of protection. Let's see. Don't know if we'll be able to outrace them, especially since they are dealing more damage over here. Uh, this one actually has, ooh, this one has damage behind the target. And even though this hero does have block, we actually have enough damage with the skill to destroy this. I'll summon over here on a uh, C3. And you see enough damage to destroy that. Okay, it looks like we there's also a health and attack swap whenever the warlord is attacked. All right, so in this case now, our uh, what do you call it? our frost was to swap. Okay, we have the rocker boys now coming out. They do have their splash damage, which will actually let's see destroy this hero. Splash over here and actually see how much uh, 142. So that might actually be enough to destroy the vampire here as well. Woo! Wow. Okay. So they have the Yoster over here, silences our male heroes. And then also you can see the large health boost at the beginning, or at the end, and then also damage at the beginning of the next turn. Uh, let's see. Damage, damage over here. Wow, even our death trigger isn't enough to deal damage to destroy that. That's not what we want to see. Our vampire's gone too. Block over there. 
Okay, we do need to block. Good deal on the freeze. This one does not have pierce. All right, we're going to summon our Bastet over here to help us block. Also deals damage to heroes when it comes into play. Which will actually allow us to start wounding those heroes. Okay, we have the damage happening there. The Freddy is probably going to come out next turn. Or actually this turn because of the low health on the Frost. But we just need to wound these heroes in order to get them out of the way. Mmm, okay. Oh. It's here over there. Combat, combat, combat. We'll do destruction now, as mentioned. Oh. Okay, because we did need to get rid of those. I'm gonna follow up and summon an order here to still trigger off the free skill. Also do want to protect the frost. Uh, this hero has uh, some attack, so that's good. Steal some damage. Okay, and then freezing again. Next turn, actually, we're going to be summoning the... Looks like we're going to summon the Madame Agony. Or not. <laughs> we just take the damage that way. Wow. Okay. Big turn for them. They did the Mr. Devil, dealing damage to their heroes. The Chaos Hero over here had the Death Trigger to summon... Uh, give one of their Chaos Heroes an extra attack. And then the Freddy came out off of the Destroyed Frost, resulting in that big swing of damage. So pretty rough one this morning, as you see, I saw a lot of pretty strong battles, and uh, yeah, well, that's just a taste of what's going on for the uh, the week. So yeah, we'll check back in in about, like this looks like two days, just because of the attempts uh, recharging every 12 hours. So yeah, we'll have some more Dark Tower later, and we'll see you guys later as well. This is Happy Splasher, signing off.